Hey y'all, it's your girl Nelly D. And I got the one and only Drew with me. LOL, probably Drew on his social media handles. Show him love. Thank you so much. And I have, of course, the host of the Nelly Drayton show, Miss Nelly Drayton herself, also known as at Nelly Drayton across all social media platforms. So please show her some love, y'all. Absolutely. And we have a special guest with us. Somebody by the name of Ken Currington. What's up? What's up? Local creative. Had to get him on here. Y'all show him some love. Can you give us your social medias? Yes. Uh, Instagram, Ken the model, period between each word. And my Insta, uh, I'm sorry, my Facebook is Ken Currington. And my TikTok, at Ken Currington, all one word. All one on word. TikTok. On the ticks of, on the, on the, tick of the talks. On the talks. <laughs> yes. Of tick. Mm-hmm. Y'all, listen, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. We would like to say hey to the Spotify listeners and Apple because we're on Apple now. That's a thing. Whoa. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Please make sure you like, subscribe, and follow us on this journey Mm -hmm. on the Nelly Drayton Show where creative souls gather to go beyond. We're going to get into some creative journeys today. You guys ready? I'm ready, baby. Yes, yes. Let's get into it. So. All right. So today we are getting into the different journeys that creative um, creatives endure. Um, a lot of people, when they're finding themselves thrust it into the industry. There's a lot of struggles that come with it. There's a lot of hurdles. There's a lot of unspoken struggles. Um, and we're going to get into that today because our guest here is somebody who is definitely hustling and grinding and doing the damn thing. So we're going to get a very fresh perspective on what it's like to go through a journey, a creative journey. So... <clears throat> Sorry, <laughs> sip the tea, sip the tea. Sip my tea. So, you do modeling, you do acting. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it like for you, especially here? Because this is a local scene, so a lot of people probably um, minimize your work or minimize your efforts. So, what kind of motivation do you need to keep keep going when, like, say you talk about one of your projects and someone's like, oh. Are you doing that that little project, oh, that little thing? I do not like what that. do you do that keeps you going? Because that is that's definitely hard for me to hear. It's passion. Mm-hmm. It's love for what I do. Like when I played basketball, uh, even family would tell me, "Do you know the odds of making it to the NBA?" Like obviously that would be an ultimate goal, but right. that isn't why I do it. I did it because it was a stress reliever and it's something that I genuinely enjoy doing. So. Mm-hmm. Even if somebody says, oh, you're doing that little project, and it's like, oh, you still working that little job of yours? Uh, so <laughs> you still got to ask when you can go use the bathroom and stuff like that. Hey. So yeah, I, it's clapbacks be happening, but it's that. very, very, very rare that somebody will mention something that's, you know, oh, you're still doing that little whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as motivation, it's literally just passion for what I do. Mm-hmm. So with passion, what what is... Um, Something that like, because when I think of like a creative journey, Mm -hmm. I think of like peaks and valleys. You hear me say it all the time. There's peaks and valleys. So what's it like when you hit that peak where you're like, oh, here it is. Here's that moment. It's about to happen. Everything's to fall into place. All my hard work is working out. And then maybe that doesn't happen for you. So anybody that knows me knows that. Even when I get to that high point, mm-hmm. I very rarely stay in it because I'm always thinking about what's like next. Up. Mm-hmm. I don't really give myself time to celebrate the moment, something that I should probably do yeah. a little bit more often. But I'm always thinking about, OK, what can I do better? What's my next project? Instead of just yeah. relishing in the fact that like, bro, you just literally just did this. So like mm-hmm. take some time and enjoy this moment. Yeah. And I, I almost never do that. Mm-hmm. So even even though when there is a peak, it's like, okay, I know I can get a little bit higher than this. So mm-hmm. for right now, I'm trying to work on that. But mm-hmm. as far as the peaks, it's it's literally just I may enjoy it for a few moments and it's like, okay, yeah, I know that I can the next thing is it's like I can do this, I can be in front mm-hmm. of a larger audience, or I could do a bigger project, or I can mm-hmm. do more episodes, or whatever the case may be. So that's something I'm working on, but as of right now, it's like whatever's next yeah. up. 
No, that's a word. That's, that's a word because I think a lot of times some people are so quick to settle for something. Like, yeah. I'm finally reaping the fruits of my labor. Like, this is it. This is, like, my moment. It's like, well, no, if you, like, kind of look, like, not to be about me, but when I took Taekwondo, <laughs> my teacher would always tell me, like, you can hit any target. You just got to, like, look above it. And right. then you will reach whatever goal you wanted to. And that's a, a lesson in life. Like, mm-hmm. if you want to reach something, just kind of shoot a little bit of, you know, above it. That way, if you do land among the stars, at least you, you're there. You know right. what I'm saying? You could have been shooting for the moon, but you landed within the stars. So that's a good word because as a creative person, especially somebody who is very passionate about what I do, I'm not going to lie. If I hit a real nice peak, I'm going to eat that up. <laughs> going to eat that eat up. up. I'm like, that's yes, good. I made it. But that, that's a good word. I needed to hear that because there's, there's more. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and you should always, there's no ceiling when it comes to the work that we do. So you should always, like, nope. when you do hit a ceiling, open it up, baby. It's like, a, you know. See, Matthew McConaughey had said uh, something along the lines of, he's chasing himself 10 years from now. Mm. So he'll never, like, so like 10 years later, he's like, all right, now I'm chasing myself 10 years. So he never catches what he's, yeah. what he's, what he's trying to catch, but the fact that he's continuing to chase. Mm-hmm. So that's me. Like, it, I never get comfortable mm-hmm. because if I do, then it's like everything else is kind of passing me by. Like mm-hmm. evolution will continue to be a thing. Like mm-hmm. no matter what it is, it's, Things are going to get better, so you got to learn to um, be able to uh, adapt. adapt. It, yeah. yeah, and and that's yeah. I mean, like again, I bring it back to basketball. Like if you look at it from when it first started mm-hmm. to now, you, mm-hmm. know, you didn't see any. You didn't really see anybody doing a whole lot of three point shots in the eighties. But now it's like pretty much what's all is taken now. Yeah. But it's still the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's just different ways of how things are played. So yeah. Um, another thing is like with the movies that are out now. Um, like the Marvel movies or superhero movies, period. Mm-hmm. Um, some directors don't like that because they feel it's taken away from the essence of like an actual storyline mm-hmm. instead of getting it from source material like comics. So yeah, it all depends on who you are and what your audience is. But again, like it's you got to keep chasing whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I want to bring up um, the next thing that we were kind of talking about off of the cameras: um, mm-hmm. your process. Because we always talk about the creative process here on the Nellie Drayton show. We talk about, well, what motivates you as far as um, like day to day things. Like if you have a nine to five, you know, is it being around like minded people that really gets you going? Is it, I don't know, the conversation that you have with a hater at work and (laughs) that doesn't push you to write two short films. And you know what I mean? There's so many different life experiences Mm -hmm. and things that motivate you. So mm-hmm. to basically to be a creative, because I mean, who wakes up and I mean, yeah, we might wake up and just do it, yeah. but who wakes up and think, yeah, today's gonna be a creative day. Yeah. <laughs> well, they may it may start off that way, but then when it turns into a job, uh, it's a whole yeah. different kind of yeah. waking up. Yeah. I think for me, um, so I do I, my nine to five. It's it's crazy because when I first started, I loved what I did only because I get to help people. It's um. Uh, basically, it's, it's a patient assistance program where people get their medication for free. So I'm actually a part of one of those myself. Mm-hmm. But then I forgot you're dealing with people. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're ups- they call in immediately upset. It's like, I'm not going to deal with this. And right. well, what is your name? I'm not telling you. Like, it's like it's like no, I'm not. Nanya. Yeah, you you know you can't even give to me what you're trying to call in for. So I'm not giving you any information. See how that works. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. lady got upset. I hung up. I said something happened to my internet, but <laughs> <laughs> but with the nine to five, nothing really from that job motivates me outside of it funds my dreams. That's the only reason mm-hmm. I'm still there, mm-hmm. and I'm literally just like, you got this. You got this. It's only for a little bit longer. How mm-hmm. long? I don't know, but it's not going to be forever. Mm-hmm. But what really gets my process, like the, get the process going, is it'll be something random. Yeah. And, and literally, and then like how my mind works, it, it jumps from one thing to the next, the next, the next thing I know, I've got this great big idea. And it's like, mm-hmm. like how am I going to put this in the real world? Right. How am I going to make this a thing? Um, it's like same thing with like my paintings. Like I may think of something, or I may see something like, for instance, like that group picture right there. I may see that, but like I may not want to use group. I may want to use that background for something else. Oh, so, okay. and then I have an image of whoever or whatever else that might be there because I love colors. So it's like, all right, 
I got that. Now what am I going to add to that? Right. Um, when it comes to wanting to act and or even model, it depends on character. So mm-hmm. modeling for me isn't always about fashion. Like that's how I got in it. But if I'm being honest, that's the least like entertaining thing for me to do. I'd much rather do either cosplay or be myself mm-hmm. and do something as far as it could be a cosplay photo shoot mm-hmm. or it could just be me being me and wearing what I want to wear. Yeah. And it's not necessarily the fashion itself, but it's the person. Yeah. So they say the person makes the clothes, not the clothes making the person. Mm-hmm. So that's how I do that. But as far as like acting, acting, I know it also depends on what we're doing. Like we mentioned earlier, like my character um, in, in the film that we were doing, um, I really wanted to like dive deeper into that character's persona, his psyche mm-hmm. and everything, but we really didn't get a chance to do that. But I think that also dictates how my process is going to go as well. So like mm-hmm. if it's somebody who's a gangster or if it's somebody who's a superhero, if it's somebody who's, you know, soft and doesn't really want to do anything, yeah. who wants mm-hmm. to be passive aggressive or somebody who's just chill, laid back, whatever the case may be, like that's when I go into my process, my creative process, because now I got to figure out how am I like this person in real life? Like, in yeah. what ways can I connect? So, mm-hmm. that's how it is for me as far as like a pre- creative process goes. Okay. I like that because yeah. I definitely, my thing is music. So, mm-hmm. I like that you said that of some type of art, but the background could be the thing or mm-hmm. just anything. Your, your vision affects your creativity. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, sure. and when it comes out the way you see it in your head, isn't it like the best thing? I know. <laughs> I know. My, OT, my OTR series. Oh, my God. Listen, I, every time I heard this song, uh, what is the song called? It's Click and Diva mashed together mm-hmm. for Beyonce and Jay-Z's On The Run tour. I Every time I heard the song, I kept envisioning like just the same thing over and over. And mm-hmm. so once I finally got to put it together, I was like, finally, and it, my you God. You killed it. I mean, I don't, know how many t- I don't know how many episodes I'm going to say this, but you killed it. It was fab. It's See, and, that, and that's just like, I, I can't express, it's, you know what? When you get the first cut into a piece of fresh cardboard, like that, that not cardboard, but like that construction paper, you mm-hmm. remember that? Mm-hmm. To me, it was like, you knew nobody else touched this, and you were the first one to cut. It's like that. Like, that's how it feels. Oh, wow. It's just like, oh, this is, I'm doing I'm this. I'm starting this. something. You're right. And then this somebody, is mine. <laughs> exactly. Somebody else is doing it. Like, I don't even care who else cuts this after. It's mine. I did it. The first cut's me. Yeah. Like, that's how it feels. Like, it's like the best thing. I remember my clothing line, um, Phoenix, the very, very, very first shirt that came out. Mm-hmm. And I was at this fashion show. It's called the Al Natural Fashion. I think it was like 2019. And the person who did who um, who did my clothing, she was like, "I got your shirt for you," mm-hmm. and it came out exactly the way I wanted it to. And I just I just sat there. I was just like, "Oh my god! Like I'm gonna I'm gonna cry right now because <laughs> this is it. This like is your, like what your baby I see was born. In, yes, like yeah. this is what I see in yeah. my head. So yeah. yeah, it's the best feeling in the world. Now I'm gonna say something. You done plugged like five things. Oh yeah, you said my paintings, the movie that I was in, <laughs> my fat. How do you juggle all the stuff on top of having a nine to five job? How um, do you juggle? It's 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 hard. I'm not gonna lie, but I sometimes I might go from one to the other depending mm-hmm. on what it is. I know some paintings like I'll, I'll hit a block and then like I can't really do anything. I'll have to step away from it for a few days. Mm-hmm. But honestly, I just love what I do. Like I, I can't. It's like if I'm not if I'm sitting if I'm sitting down and it's like you know what you could be doing mm. <laughs> so okay no that is a word you know so, because I have been like get your word because I mean it's like come on time is of the essence right I, I don't like to put that pressure on myself because I really feel like for me like my creative process it it has to happen organically like mm-hmm. it has to be what I want to do it has to be how I want it like. Mm-hmm. Like, like when sometimes like that's why some, a lot of my friends don't even they are not know. even a part of my process like at all because it's like y'all y'all you here and you're having a good time you drinking y'all smoking whatever no i need y'all to it's time for me to get to work no you yeah. know what i'm saying absolutely like, i think another thing that helps like my, my girlfriend's also a creative so mm-hmm. i actually met her at a uh at a show at a fashion show well auditions actually and i came in as somebody that was supposed to help them in walk and because if, if that's one thing that i can say that i started off great with was my walk mm-hmm. everything else i needed help with like posing because i was awkward like i didn't know what to do but 
as far as as having a creative person that that you're with, mm-hmm. that helps so much too. Because yeah. it's like, and even then, she's like, "Hey, what are you doing today? Why aren't you up?" And it's like, I, "Maybe you're right." It's like eight in the morning. Yeah. And she's like, "You don't overslept." I'm like, "It's it's eight. And she's like, "What time are you usually up?" I'm like, "Good point." So <laughs> I'm we like, we definitely touched base <laughs> on that on like having a supportive partner and how important Ooh, that we is. We touched on that. That's we have a previous episode. If you haven't watched it or listened to it, I'm plugging it in right now. We're gonna wait for a second. We're gonna wait for you. You go ahead. We'll be right here. Just <laughs> we'll be, go ahead. We'll, we'll be waiting. Did you go? Did you go yet? Are you still here? You're still here. Okay. They probably don't have YouTube Premium. <gasps> Dang. True. Oh, sorry. Oh, get it's the cup. Don't Child. feel bad. I don't either. I, I eat that up. <laughs> I Every need time to I, probably like, get sixty dollars come out my bank account. I'm like, it pays for itself. I love it. Listen, I hate that. Come ads. back. That might be the why. Mm. <laughs> I hate that. Yeah, ads. that might that. be why I have to get it, man. You, yeah, you have to. I, I can't. When people like, when people like, show me like YouTube videos and there's an ad, I'm like, peasants. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I love it. Oh my <laughs> Someone God. has have EBT YouTube. card. You need your own. F- no. I don't have YouTube premium. Then don't ever let me pull it up on my YouTube. Okay? Because I had no ads. We can fast forward. We can. I can turn my phone off and it'll play in the background. I got you. All right. Or okay. just hurry up and get through the ad first. Yeah, before show. I see it. Because I'm be like, that's <laughs> All right. Turn that off. Okay. No, but, but having a creative person with you. Um, I think I think you'd like her. She's mm-hmm. she's bubbly. Um, she's one of those people where like you, gosh, she's gonna kill me. All right, so imagine you meeting like like a cat for the first time, and it's like mm, I don't know if I like you. Ooh. but you start to get to know, it, and the cat's like the most affectionate thing ever. But oh, to you, right. not to anybody else, because it doesn't know it. That's her. Oh. So some people be like, oh. Your girlfriend's kind of mean. She's not mean. She don't know you. <laughs> that's okay. what that I mean, so, but that's to be facts. expected. Yeah. Though. So some people like that. they'll like, is she cool? Because like, that was the first time I saw her too. Like she has like the most stern RBF, and it's like, mm. are you cool? She's like, no, I'm fine. I'm just I'm like, oh, okay. It's Ooh, we talking. <laughs> we talking a word. We talking a word. That is but as far as like she paints, mm-hmm. she loves to do like loves to take photos. Like even then, like she. Some people are asked, well, um, are you getting paid for this? Cause we get paid for some of our stuff. But she's like, I don't care if I do or not. I love to take love pictures. It, yeah. like, she'll go to a parking garage, take uh, take one of our uh, ring lights and set it up. And mm-hmm. she's doing her thing. So she'll always ask me, what do you need from me? Oh. And when she asked me that, I'm like, mm-hmm. at, especially on the spot, I'm like, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I yeah, don't you know that's, that's, a way, that's a waiter question, baby. Right. Like, I you don't know. Hold on. I'm very waiter. Put it on my list. And but like, she'll throw out suggestions here and there, and then she gets me. She gets me going. So that's love, right there. But that. the processing part, like that's yeah, that's another part of that. But like, she's yeah, she's definitely somebody who, as long as <laughs> with the creative uh, process, that she helps. And sometimes, like, she really do get on me. Like, you know, mm-hmm. hey, you should be doing this. And yeah. It sucks because it's just like telling what to do, but in my mind, it's like. Ooh, God, you're <laughs> so, because she gets it, like yeah, it's coming it's, from an angle that's not just you're a lazy bum. It's coming from you got dreams, baby. And Come she on. knows, and yeah. that's mm-hmm. like I will ask her all the time, like, hey, do you, you know, what do you think I could work on this and that? And she'll always give me positive feedback, but I'm like, all right, what do I really need to work on? And then she'll tell me. But even then, it's like I think you're doing great. But in my mind, it's like ah, mm-hmm. I feel like I could work on it a little bit better. So yeah. I'm always chasing perfection, even mm-hmm. though I'm never going to actually be perfect. No. So that's just yeah. That's I think that's like a gift and a curse if you want to say but i think any person who like has creative energy that they exert probably feels the same way because i know like i am a perfectionist through and through like if i like if like our second podcast content was great but we the audio was not good Ooh, the, yeah. I remember the, that. the the lighting wasn't and we was like no nope. no nope. yeah we was like <laughs> nope. this ain't I mean, going we can, we can redo that we can have that conversation again another day well, but the good thing about that though, is it. the foundation of it that source material even though you said it was great it was everything else around it so mm-hmm. you know that the only thing that needed to be touched up was the aesthetics yep. not necessarily the, yep. the meat of it so mm-hmm. that's a good thing to have yeah, yeah for sure for yeah. sure absolutely Mm-hmm. So you plugged in that you're a painter, well, artiste, or, 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 
Pablo Picasso. Oh my God. Michelangelo. <laughs> Am I saying the right people? Oh, I don't you know. are actually, yes. I'm saying the right people. Yeah. The painters. You we'll are. Just a name of all the turtles. Even that, those are the <laughs> Leonardo. Yeah. Michelangelo. Michelangelo. You all know the establishment here. Drew's plugged in. Very. I am not. Very plugged in. <laughs> Y'all know I'm not. So you are a model. You are an actor. What is going to get you from where you are now? to where you want to be as mm-hmm. far as what you say off camera the favorite actor everyone's favorite actor yeah everyone's like, favorite actor do you uh, want to be everyone's favorite actor as far as like <clears throat> oh my god he has range he was playing a, a homeless man in, in in this movie and then this one he's playing a freaking superstar and mm-hmm. then the superhero in this one mm-hmm. like the range is like you can Your be the, the be most so yeah you can play the smallest role and people be like oh my god that's what's his name I yeah. want, is that what I you? want people to know me for for who I am personally, and that's genuine. Okay. So my characters are going to be played in a genuine manner. So whatever that is, if that means range, or if that just means like um, The Rock. I love The Rock. I love him, but his range isn't that great, but that's good. He's he genuine. sticks <clears throat> to what he's great at. When you see him in something, you you know what you're getting. Yeah. It's yeah. an action movie. A little comedy in it. Style. Comedy, yeah. because he's genuinely funny. He's so, genuinely cool. Exactly. That's what you mean. So like if you see... I hope if you see someone, um, another one, Jim Carrey, like he's played a couple of serious roles, but yeah. they're still funny. Mm-hmm. I don't. I think the only role I've seen Denzel play that was a little bit comedic was The Preacher's Wife. Mm. Anything else is like, all right, I love his movies, yeah. but it's like it's not to take anything away from him. But like when you say, oh, this person has more range than that person, I mean that's cool, but yeah. are they sticking to what they do best? Because if, yeah. if I'm gonna step out of something. I need to make sure that I'm going to give you the genuine it need me to make sense. and make sure that I yeah. can give you this performance. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's just like, eh, he tried and it's mm-hmm. not. It was just Kendrick and doing whatever. So, yeah, yeah I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, I just want people to know and love me as in my work as genuine. Like, oh, yeah. he, he really did put like all his all into that. Even yeah. if it doesn't come out great, it's fine. It's just I know I put my all into the, it. The and the thing about like this work that we do is. People read that. Yeah. If you are doing like your genuine best, if you are like people give you credit where it's due, just because you are like being genuine. Mm-hmm. So, because people, I'm telling you, people read that fake like oh, they do. produced, <laughs> overly produced. I can't take the overreactions. It. The, oh uh, my god, I can't take it. Like or I know, the or the underreaction. That too. Yeah. <laughs> like that's why I know we we talked about TikTok one time. And he was like, you got to chill. I can't do that. Like the ugh. No, because it's like, no, if I no no <laughs> no 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 vibes no. 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 no I can't take it. I like to see people and be like, even if it's like an acting like TikTok or like a reel on Instagram, if, if it's funny or you, I, I like people who like ah, I can't just get stick into to it. what you you know yeah. what, like like yeah. genuinely like to do like it's. And there's nothing wrong with that. And if you decide to step out of your comfort zone, I would say practice it first to see if yeah. it comes off as, you know, something that you feel like you can do. But, yeah. but I know for me, it's, it's literally just to be genuine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, That's it just so, pays. Like it just pays to be genuine. Yeah. And, and that you makes get a stand you a good on that. actor. Honestly, yeah. it, yeah. Makes you a, it makes you a more communicative actor because you genuinely just want to do great and you're probably pulling genuinely. from something which you know always emotes mm-hmm. well on camera when you're pulling oh, from absolutely. somewhere mm-hmm. I know and to answer your other question like what would get me to that point mm-hmm. dedication and consistency I think um, the consistency part especially, especially it's just like working out like some days oh God, I don't feel like it I'll mm-hmm. get, but I know once I get up and get in the car it's like alright you ain't got no choice now yeah. so, <laughs> you gotta you know, get I'm there at the gym and it's like alright now, sometimes I'm like, you know, you could just leave. And it's like, well, why am I here, though? I'm already here. I might as well just do it. Yeah. So it's just on those days is when it's most important because that means that I force myself to get up, go work out. And it's like an hour, hour and a half. Now you can do whatever it is that you said mm-hmm. you wanted to do. Mm-hmm. The earlier you go, you get it out the way. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're, everything is going. Your metabolism sped up. Now your mind's going. So what can I do to continue to? Yeah. So yeah. it's just... um. I, I 
I really just want to be, like I said, I really want to be the best that I can be. Mm-hmm. And I know that me personally, I'll definitely be a lot of people's favorite actor off of that. Yeah. Because I I know me, like, I'm not a terrible person. I've done terrible <laughs> things. Don't get me wrong. Like, I'm human. Right. Um, like, but nothing in the aspect of where, like, nah, bro, like, he's trash. Like, I wouldn't yeah. want to talk to him at all. I wouldn't <laughs> want to be around him. So, yeah, it's, I've been, I've, I've definitely been in, in situations to where I feel like if I really, really, really put my all into this mm-hmm. i would definitely be somebody's favorite actor so. yeah absolutely yeah. I, str- I strongly agree mm-hmm. i do Me too. as far as um projects and things that you have worked on you were mentioning um a commercial or something with hulu oh yeah i want you to plug all of everything that you this is your resume shout this is out. your moment right yes. now to shout out your resume what you've done what's coming up what you're thinking about doing plug all of that in now so Shout out to James Watts. He's definitely a, he's a local director. I've done a few things with him. Um, God, there's a movie I was in. I can't really really remember the name of it. Um, that's terrible. <laughs> um, the blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I did do a film with Sensual Bliss, um, where I played uh, a stripper. I was a doctor. Now I didn't take off all my clothes. Come on, layers. Come on, layers. <laughs> I, Literally, <laughs> layers. <laughs> I didn't take off all my clothes. I just had on like the, I just took off the, the jacket and just had like all just just my chest and everything showing. But it got to the point to where it looked like I was about to strip, and then it, you know we cut. So I never did actually do anything. <laughs> you know what? I'm just gonna uh, sorry for the Spotify and Apple listeners. I if you come to the YouTube channel, you'll see at this point that I was a little bit um, flabbergasted, <laughs> flabbergasted, <laughs> however you want to pronounce it. I was all of the versions of that word. And somebody was like, I'm a stripper and a doctor. Yeah. And I was like, yes, <laughs> I don't know. backstory. Listen, <laughs> Drew's like, yes. And I'm up here like, I love a, I love a, I love that's a range. double entendre. <laughs> that's, but yeah, come on now. That's frame. That's that. why I was like, there was another, like, oh, I don't, I, there's another you, short film I, that, uh, where I played like this, uh, this deaf guy. It was. It was. It's. It's one of those films where it's like. Um. I think it was. It was meant to be kind of frightening. But then when you see the end, it's like, oh. So it's basically just me chasing this girl because she dropped her phone. But because I can't speak or hear, it's like. Oh. So come on. Yeah. What? That's good. I might so have to she's, that out. Yeah. When we finally get to the end, like she's panting. She's just like, oh my god. And I'm like, giving yeah. her a phone, and she's like, thank you, and I'm just like can't hear oh so i love that but you're welcome and i just walk off and she's yeah that's good so that was that was that was now you you know what i don't know it's a whole other thing i don't forget um and then uh the commercial was actually early this year it was in who was off for hulu Mm -hmm. and um it was just a take they said that they they didn't know if they were really going to use it or not but i did it and it felt great one take, cause but I'm not gonna lie, I was over there practicing, 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 <laughs> yeah, I had practicing. It down. and I was like, I'm gonna make sure I get this in one or two takes. And I did the first take, and the lady was like, I don't think we really need but to see see people, They so, remember <laughs> stuff like that. They, mm-hmm. they, that stuff makes an impact. Yeah, yeah and um, I, I did that. Um, also, there. Oh, I told you about the um, the billboards. So yes. I'm in every county in Kentucky. I'm in the uh, driver's license, like the DMVs. I'm in the county clerk's office. Um, but this is something I didn't even know that was going to happen. Like mm-hmm. I just, it was uh, for Donate Life for Kentucky. It was for people who donate uh, organs, it's organ tissue and retina donations. So mm-hmm. um, I'm a liver transplant recipient. And that was the reason why I was asked to do some of these photos. But I had no idea they were going to be plastered everywhere. Right. So um, I remember the first time, the first one I saw, I think it was on like 15 and something. And they took it down. But there's, there's still others that are literally still across mm-hmm. Kentucky and to see my face on billboards like that people are hitting me up like hey this is you or this is have you seen this there's this one in the um in the courthouse I haven't seen any Mm -hmm. of these except for the one that was on 15 and everybody's like hitting me up like I knew this was you and then when I say that I know this person they're like yeah right this is like I think it's so cool because it's like wow like okay people just hit me up saying that so it's the billboards is cool. The the short films are fun. The commercial is fun. I just did a uh, photo shoot last... No, it was like three days ago. I'm sorry. Uh, for Kentucky Tourism. Okay. And um, that was something that was I, I really wasn't expecting to, to get. But um, from when I was in L.A., everybody said I had a great look. Now, the only thing that 
I wish I would have did differently was to one made a resume because I didn't realize how extensive mine is until mm. saying it out loud. Mm -hmm. And then um, an actual portfolio. Now the portfolio I did have needs to be updated, but that's something that I felt that anybody who's looking to be an actor, model, whatever, you yeah. want to make sure that you always have updated pictures. So that was that was on my part. I messed that up. But they were like, if you can get back to us with some things that you've done, mm -hmm. we'll go from there. Yeah. And I didn't get a single callback. Mm -hmm. Not a single one. I think there were like 20-something agencies there. And that hurt. Mm -hmm. It got to the point where I was like, yeah, this ain't it for me, maybe. I don't yeah. know. Mm. So it sucked because it was one of mm -hmm. those where it's just like, I could have did better, but you didn't. So what now? Mm. Do you want to yeah. continue to do this? Or do you want to just sit back and be like, well... I was an actor like 30 years ago. I don't want to be that. I don't yeah. want to be that. <laughs> yeah, I'm an actor. Here's a commercial that I did right. for like tampon. I'm not even a woman. <laughs> yeah, no, no one wants to be that person. No. Yeah, and, and then also in this line of work, it doesn't, age doesn't really matter. Nope. Like if you're an sure athlete, there's something different. Like you have, yeah. you have a timeline that you, you know, where you can, what, 18? They're counting down then, the moment you graduate college. Oh, absolutely. Or if you even graduate college, some people get drafted right out of You know, school. in the NFL, 25 is like a veteran. Like, it's mm -hmm. old. Yeah. <laughs> Sports, man. Yeah. Well, because you, first of all, your body deteriorates yeah. rapidly, especially when you're, like, constantly. Because they, mm -hmm. they're playing, like, three games a week. And then in between that, they're oh, traveling. Like NBA, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're like traveling the whole time. So I mean, you're like putting your body down season. You're working out. You're, I mean, your body deteriorates. And you got back to back, so then you have, mm -hmm. you have one game and like you're out there kick bomb. I'm still feeling it <laughs> from last week. It's almost been a week. Oh my god. So I'm that like, hold on, no, no, y'all people do it. Oh my goodness, that is true. Oh, I might plug in post Nelly. Maybe if you feel like it, looking forward and everything, po put in uh, the clip of me and Drew while he was playing kickball. Hey guys, no. I'm back. I'm about to do a quick interview with someone that you guys know. If you don't know him, you're gonna know him for sure. I'm about to scare him. We've already saw him, but we're gonna do a random pop up real quick and scare him again. Oh my God, Drew, 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 Drew. Oh my God, I have heard so much about you. I know that you play kickball and you're also the co-host of the Nelly Drayton Show. That is correct. <laughs> Girl, I was like, just <laughs> ran up on me, baby. <laughs> you see my face? I'm like, I don't know. I don't think I did. I was just like, da, 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 da. I was like, I'm gonna scare him real quick before, that's before that's we leave, but I wanted to. So silly. Like, it's the actress today. Yes, I am the co-host of the like, Drayton Show. Out here playing kickball. I'm over here being a star athlete. I'm voted um, hottest kickballer. So. MVP. Well, not MVP, the hottest kickballer. <laughs> So that's nice. Right I, w I was close, but not close. Nice. Not close enough. Not quite. Nice. Oh. Okay. Thank you for coming out and supporting me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, I tried my best. When I lost the tournament. They don't have to know that, Drew. Girl, <laughs> I'm going to tell them. I ain't got no trophy to prove that I won. That's a good point. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to be bragging. Wow. I was over here like, you ain't got to tell me. But then you said that. Like, yeah. <laughs> They're going to be like, how you celebrate it? I didn't. <laughs> I went and got drinks in the bar. I was That's one thing morning. about sports. It's either yeah. you're gonna drink to celebrate or drink to uh, drink the pain away. It's, yeah. it's one of the you're gonna drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Drinking was gonna happen <laughs> right. at some point in the day. Ay, ay, ay. She's like, oh, I don't want to do sports. <laughs> no, yeah, absolutely not. No, I might do the volleyball thing, but that's another conversation oh for another God. day. So before we shut it down, yeah. I want um, if you're feeling comfortable too, I want you to break down um, the health stuff and. If it's been um, causing like limitations to your dreams, so I got it uh, on the 29th. Actually, it'll be six years that I received it, but um, it's it's helped in a lot of ways. One, um, it did take away basketball for me because um, I didn't get my transplants. I was 27, and when I was at when I was at uh, University of Louisville, I was going in as a walk on, I was trying to earn my scholarship and. Coach Patino, like, absolutely loved me. But I had an enlarged spleen with an enlarged liver, and that was like, yeah, we, we can't do that. Mm. Like it's it, Which is understandable. I was, yeah. I was a liability. And if I got hit the wrong way in my spleen, I'd, yeah, it yeah. was mm. it would rupture five yeah. minutes. And the, unless I'm in the hospital when it happens. Yeah. So that was like a gut check for me because like even if I didn't make it to the NBA, I wanted to be a Cardinal. That was my thing. I, I grew up, Louisville, like, was everywhere. It was I had no choice but to be a Cardinal fan. So yeah. I, that's what I wanted to do. So it was like, after that, after it was like, well, you can't, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't know what to do. I had stopped drawing uh, well up to that point. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even know if I could still do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just was like, okay, I don't, I don't know what, where, where to go from here. And so when that happened, um, I was in a relationship at that time. She left. Um, then I ended up getting really, really, really sick. And um, that was when I ended up having to be induced and I'm medically induced in a coma. I ended up like, it was a main vein and the varices veins in my esophagus, they all burst at the same time. Oh my God. So um, mm. I had a heart, what was my blood pressure? I think it was 60 over 30. Oh. And they were trying to keep me from having a heart attack and a stroke. Oh like, my so God. I remember it vividly too. Oh my God. It was like, uh, it was that Jewish? I remember this lady. She still works there. Um, she gets lip fillers and she was all in my face. Like, you're going to be okay. And I, I don't remember actually saying anything. I know my grandma and my mom told me that it was like, yeah, you, um, you looked at her like, why are you in my face? <laughs> like, like, Girl, what is that? And so, on your face in my face. <laughs> but I was making jokes. <laughs> I was making jokes while I was in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, um, an ex friend of mine came in and she was like, How are you feeling? I'm like, I'm all right. And as I'm over here laughing, she was like, What are you laughing at? I'm like, Cuz, I mean, if I'm trying to like lose weight, this is the best way to do it. As I'm vomiting blood into oh these things. God. So oh, she's looking at me like, I don't think it's time to be joking. And I'm like, I ain't gonna know what, I don't what else, else to do. do? Like, it's, yeah. So then I'm asking, I'm like, Where are my car keys? Where's my phone? Uh, and then my. <laughs> My homeboy was like, where do you think you're going? I'm like, well, I need to make sure my keys and stuff are straight. So then finally, I started to like kind of go in and out. And then um, the craziest thing was when I was induced, I still heard and saw everything. Mm. I can't for life me explain it, but I'm going to try my best. So being in a coma, you can still hear what goes on around you. Now, when I could differentiate what was real and what was a dream, what seemed real was my dream. Mm. What was outlined in green and kind of looked like an like after image when somebody moved, that was real. That's and I heard, I remember the beeps. I remember the conversations, the laughing. I woke up after they, you know, took me out of it. And I was like, uh, do you guys remember somebody with a Russian accent? And my mom was like, oh, that was me. I was messing with you. I didn't know if you could hear me. And I'm like, <laughs> yo. <laughs> so... From that day forward, from, I think after after that, and then of course after the transplant, because they said that um, that made the transplant easier because mm-hmm. of that main vein. It could have burst on the operating table, but it didn't. Mm-hmm. So they said it was a breeze, 10 hours. I don't know how 10 hours is a breeze, but they said it was, so I'll take their word for it. Yeah. But I immediately felt better. No. So I wanted to go out and do better. I was like, I want to go out and do something. I don't know what to do, though. I just don't want to do it great. Yeah, and then that's when friends, so-called friends, left. Um, mm. I didn't really have anybody else. Like the ex that was there found out that she was doing some shady things right after we broke up, and I was like, "Wow, like okay, so what do I do?" Later on, I think it was in 2018. It was uh, not even a year later. Um, a friend of mine was like, "Why don't you just do a, fo- a photo shoot to be more comfortable with yourself, with your scar?" And I was like, "Whatever, it's, you know," because I hated it. the scar. Was like, it was, I'd never seen it there. It's like it's huge. I don't know what to do. This is ugly. What am I gonna do now? I did a photo shoot, and then that's how I got into modeling. Mm-hmm. Everybody was like, "Hey, what's that? That's cool. Can we take a picture of it?" So People like I was friend. like, "All right." Mm-hmm. So every time somebody saw it, it was a conversation starter. So I'm like, "All right." What can I do now to make sure that I can stand out? There's a million different guys, white skin, six two, hazel eyes. Now, <laughs> I got hazel eyes. <laughs> now, what would make me stand out was scar. my scar. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I need to do something. So, and then I ended up growing my hair out because I never let it really grow. I never let my beard grow and. Mm-hmm. I didn't know if it was because I was sick or because the girl I was with at the time just didn't like when beards started to grow. And she was like, that's ugly. So I was like, oh, all right, I guess I won't grow it. But from that point on, I knew that like I'm meant here. I'm meant to do something better. Mm-hmm. So I took that as this is my second chance. This is my rebirth. Phoenix, which is where I got wow. that from, because this is my this is my second life. This is the second half of my life. Mm-hmm. First 27 years, it was cool. You know what I'm saying? Childhood, all that. But now I need to know what am I going to do? to better my life and those who I love who are around me. Mm -hmm. So that's when I decided to really take modeling serious. It was in 2019. I'd always wanted to act. Mm -hmm. 
even when I played basketball. But what better segue when to get into acting is modeling. So yeah. I, I mean, like, they yeah. usually go hand in hand. Exactly. So I was like, I want to do this. This seems fun. It seems like something I really think I can get into, which was the modeling. Because mm. once the acting started to come, I was like, yes, okay, what characters can I play? What can I do? And I was a little overexcited at times, but I was just happy to be have somebody think of me and want me to be in a position to where I could showcase my talents. Mm-hmm. So if I'm being honest, the transplant was the best thing to happen to me outside of saving my life. Mm-hmm. But it was, I could do more things. I have yeah. more energy. I have um, real goals that I feel like I can attain and not have to worry about, am I going to die tomorrow? So right. that was the biggest thing. Um, once I got to the point to where I knew, I think they said after a five-year period, like if nothing happens, then you're golden. Mm-hmm. Well, it'll be six years for me. So, Ooh, <laughs> yes. Come on. so yes. yeah, that's, um, I call it my rebirth day. So I treat it like a birthday, except I don't go out drinking because, you know, you got a new liver. So. Yeah, don't, <laughs> right. you, know, but, you know, mess with the new God. Right. <laughs> right. Not for real. You got I, be, I, I do, yeah. I do celebrate. So mm-hmm. um, I, I just... I'm really grateful that I'm still here. Mm-hmm. I'm really grateful that I'm still out, you know, being able to uh, make new friends, meet new people. And I, I ultimately feel like my goal here on earth is to uh, inspire and motivate. Because any, anytime I tell anybody my that story that I've, um, you know, I've gone through as far as like the physical part, physical part was great. Like I, yeah. I, I got through it. They actually told me that, um, that I was above schedule. Like, well, Dr. Jones, my, my, um, my surgeon, him, I think it was his nurses or something, called me the Wolverine because like I shouldn't have been healing as vibranium. quickly as I did. <laughs> Get the vibranium, <laughs> Meg, watch out. But you know what? <laughs> but no, I um, I was supposed to have done like four to six weeks of um, of physical therapy. I was supposed to be in the hospital for like maybe like a month and a half or something. Mm-hmm. I was there for seven days. You better come on. I was walking my third. I needed no physical therapy. You better come so, on. That's a, and man. from that point on, I think that's when, when you asked me what, what would make me, uh, well, what would I want people to love me for? And I was to that genuine part because genuinely I'm strong. Genuinely I'm um, emotionally available to whoever, whenever. Mm-hmm. I've had issues where I didn't really know how to how to say things or, or just because I'm trying to protect a person's feelings the whole time. It's like, you should always tell them the truth, even yeah. if it does hurt. So mm-hmm. I've learned that over the years, but in a sense, I'm always going to be me deep down the side. I'm always going to be genuine. Mm-hmm. The the energy, the vibe that you get from me when you first meet me will always be okay. I can, he's cool. It's a vibe. Yeah. All so, the time. Yeah. All the time. <laughs> I can't, I don't even like, I almost started singing it. Sorry. You know what? You might as well know. It's, it's, I don't I know, like, man. sorry. Oh, Sorry. I just don't. I don't jigs with it. Na 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 na. Can't get can't. jiggy with it. So anyway, <laughs> no but fabulous, fabulous story. Love it. Very inspiring. Very, very, very inspirational. Very motivating. Yeah. Um, get my eyes together. Because I was. Awesome. I'm gonna be honest with you. The first time this is actually where I haven't actually tried to like tear it up, but <laughs> and well. I, I have to say that 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 moment in my life that it was it was crazy. Like I remember everything that happened leading mm-hmm. up to the bleeding out, the um, waking up, waking up out of surgery. I do remember asking my grandmother for her phone because when I woke up out of the coma, they still had the tube, mm-hmm. couldn't talk. I remembered that. So I asked my grandmother for a phone, so I just pulled up the messenger and I'm over like, "Hey, how did it go?" So all the doctors are like, "We ain't ever seen that," and I'm just I just remembered. From last time, I couldn't talk because of that thing in my throat. So. You're ready to come up out of there. No, and they were like, I said, how did I do? How long was it? Mm-hmm. When, am I, when can I leave? When can I eat? And that, that was another thing. <laughs> and when my doctor said, you can have whatever you want and as much as you want for the next, I think, like three months. Because he said, your liver is going to need that. And your metabolism oh, yeah. is, is extreme. It's sped up now. Oh, that was the best thing because I couldn't eat a lot of the that stuff. That sounds before so fun. Oh, no, oh what's your weight? That that is like a dream, man. <laughs> that is a dream. Shit. Somebody say eat whatever you want for three months. I say I needed the green light. Look, I'm, <laughs> That's all I needed was. I'm gonna say that right now. It was also yeah. because um, I couldn't I couldn't have a job at that point and everything. I know getting food stamps. I'm like, hey, look. We ain't got to spend no money. Oh, <laughs> so, my God. Look, let, let's go to the store. Let's go. Granny, you want something? <laughs> no, for that. Real. Look, I, I should have known you then. Hold on. I got something I want to add to that list. Y'all, yeah. listen. I loved every bit of your story. Oh, yeah, thank you. Great. I feel, I love it. Our, our, our hearts and minds. 
cleared. Am, yeah, I'm clear. My cup is cup empty. Is full. <laughs> cleared. Your, oh, your yeah, cup is empty. It's empty. I've been sucking on it. <laughs> you feel like you're good? You feel like you got a lot off your... I did. I That's did. Um, if I may add one more thing, uh, people who, whatever it is, whatever creativity, a creative thing that you are chasing, continue to do so. I don't... My biggest thing is that I feel like if I give up, my blessing is literally right around the corner. Mm. And I will be absolutely upset pissed mm-hmm. if i know that my dream was right there yeah. and mm-hmm. i decided to give up because i'm tired or for mm-hmm. whatever reason so continue to go you're gonna find it even if it's to the last day that you're here on earth you're gonna find it because yeah. if you don't you're always gonna have that what if or mm-hmm. i wonder if i could have and mm-hmm. then you're gonna be that old person that old head it's like man back in my day no, I ain't back in my day. <laughs> right so just yeah. continue to chase continue to love what you do and you know on those days that you don't feel like doing anything do something anyway yeah get yourself going Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I Fabulous. liked it, loved yeah. it, and want more of it. Ken Carrington, ladies and gentlemen, post Nelly, put some applause right now. <laughs> That's my gentle moment. <laughs> we liked it, loved it, and want more of it. Yes. I'm going to put his social medias. It's going to be somewhere in here. Mm-hmm. Show this man some love. Yes. We thank you so much for coming on the Nelly Drayton Show. Thank yeah. you for having me. I'm Absolutely. glad. Absolutely. This is the Nelly Drayton Show, where creative souls gather to go beyond. We'll see y'all next time.